Two years ago, I bought the world's highest mile Hellcat and completely rebuilt the engine, pistons, rods, cam, Whipple blower, and the thing makes about a thousand wheel horsepower. I haven't seen the car for about six months, but I know it's in this trailer right here. My buddy Adam went and picked it up from Shop Hellcats down in Fort Myers area. And so we're gonna get out of this trailer. I literally haven't seen this car for like six months and I know it needs some TLC. It's just been sitting outside. I know we're probably gonna have to put a new battery in it, wash it, get it back up and running again. All right. There she is. The old Hellcat. Damn, she's a real dirty. So I'm thinking about, now that I'm looking at the wrap and how dirty it is, taking the wrap off the car. I haven't been a huge fan of it. I never really liked the way that it looked. I don't know, I didn't really like the stripes. And I've seen some other cool wraps out there for it, but the reason why I wrapped it in the first place is because it's like five different shades of red. It's definitely been in some accident and had some work done before, but let's get this thing out of the trailer and see what kind of work it needs to have done. Got the car unstrapped. Gonna try and key it on for the first time, see if it'll key on and start. If not, I know we need to jump it. That's promising. Everything kicking on. Except for the holly dash. Dang. Gonna need to jump it. Let's try this again. <laughs> well it runs but i'm trying to back it out of the trailer and it's catching on something i think i think the exhaust which is absolutely clapped is hitting on this piece of wood right here jesus this is the first time this thing sees daylight in a couple weeks but it started it's super low on fuel there's a lot we need to do to this thing so let's start going over the details to so get this thing back to perfect first of all the bumper is done that is done all this wrap needs to come off let's pop the hood All right, guys, let's talk about the Challenger for a little bit because I've got a question for you on what to do with this thing. Let's go over what needs to be done, then I'll ask you what we should do. So just so anybody that hasn't seen this car before knows what we got going on, this is a 2016 Dodge Challenger Hellcat with 176,000 miles. It does have a six-speed manual transmission. And let's go under the engine bay here. Four and a half liter Whipple supercharger head, or no, nothing's done to the heads. We have a cam, we have pistons and rods, um, you know, bigger holly down on the bottom. Obviously, cold air intake, expansion tank that's made out of aluminum, and what else? Oh, and the whole car is on a holly dominator. So basically, it's a piggyback system so that the car can be easily tuned with the holly instead of on the stock computer and it runs on E85 because of that. So a lot of stuff's been done to this car and it's looking really clapped out right now. So let's starting off with the overall appearance of the car. Not a huge fan of the wrap, kind of considering taking it off. The only problem with taking the wrap completely off the car is that it is like seven different shades of red because it's definitely been in some kind of collision and had some body work done. So take the wrap off, see what kind of condition the paint's in. I've got built specialty wheels. We would definitely need to get this rocker replaced. Moving around, we need a new rear bumper cover from when the car caught on fire. I'll insert that clip right here. This rear taillight might possibly need to be replaced. And what else? That's pretty much it for the outside. Oh, the exhaust definitely needs some attention. This exhaust is looking real crappy. 
I hate the way that that sits and hangs on the ground. Like it's not even connected right there. Oh man, that's brutal. Brutal. Okay. Definitely high on our priority list is gonna be exhaust because that is not okay to be driving around like that. Let's move to the interior. Obviously this interior has got a lot of miles on it. This needs to be replaced. This needs to be removed. This needs to be rewired because the Holly dash isn't really working. It doesn't come on sometimes. And then obviously how it's mounted is, you know, needs to be redone as well. So the car definitely needs some TLC to get back into a condition that I can be proud of it in, but I'm also considering getting rid of it. I have my eyes on a track Hawk and I'm thinking about taking the power plant out of this car, putting it into a track Hawk and kind of keeping that as like a fun ripper around town. So let me know in the comments what you think. Should I fix this car up or should I get something different to have fun with? Well, I was really hoping to do something fun today with the car, but since it needs so much work done, especially the exhaust and stuff, I think it'd be better just to kind of fix it up a little bit before we start messing with it again. Because I just don't think it's roadworthy how it is. Not only that, but it's out of fuel. I need to go get some E85. So we're going to park her up, get back to this thing. I'm so torn. Do I fix it up in its current state? Do the things like replacing the exhaust the right way and taking the wrap off and fixing some body panels and some interior parts and then I'll have a nice car or just get rid of it how it is and swap it into something new like a track hawk. Like take this built engine and put it in a track hawk. Let me know in the comments below because I'm pretty torn myself. It's been a fun car, but I'm also kind of ready for something different. I, every time I get near this thing, I'm kind of like, I don't know. I just don't have the passion for the Hellcat anymore, but it is really unique since it has so many miles on it. So I want to hear your opinion. That's it for the Hellcat content. I wanted to give you all a little rundown on this fitness journey I've been doing again. Today's day five of my 75 hard, which is two workouts every single day. One of them has to be outside. They both have to be 45 minutes long. So I've been going to the gym and then walking with my dog. Those have been my indoor outdoor workouts. You have to drink a gallon of water, read 10 pages of any non-fictional book. You also have to take a self-progress picture every day and no alcohol. So yeah, all those things for 75 days straight, no days off. I'm also doing no red meat, so no pork and no beef. I'm also doing no soda, no caffeine, no coffee, no tea, anything with caffeine is completely out. So I've only been drinking water, Gatorades, lemonades, stuff like that. And to be honest, I really don't feel that different. <laughs> it's day five. I mean, I've been really motivated to continue to like make all this content and Instagram reels and YouTube shorts and YouTube videos because I love sharing my life with you guys. I think it's really fun to document the process and I'm excited to take these memories and share them with my family at a later day in my life. So yeah, that's kind of what I've been up to guys. It's I'm trying to pump out some serious content for you guys that's kind of just keeping you in the loop of what's going on because I'll post a video and then kind of go dark for a long time and then I'll post one and now I want to start being a little bit more consistent about it because I really do like filming and editing. I've kind of always done it throughout my whole life and taught myself different tips and tricks like starting out in iMovie and then moving on to Final Cut Pro. So I just want to say to all y'all, I used to sit around and look at my YouTube analytics from my YouTube studio app or Google, I'm sorry, or Instagram insights and just stare at these analytics. And then I thought to myself, if I spent as much time staring at these analytics as I did making content, then I wouldn't even have time to look at my analytics. And that's kind of what it's turned into. Like yesterday went bore, like all out, started at like five in the morning, went until about 10 at night with work and working out and this hard 75 and editing video and blah, blah, blah. And I didn't even have time to look at the comments and the analytics. And it's kind of crazy how things will flip flop like that. Like you, you're looking at your goals of what you want to achieve but if you really start striving for them and making it happen, you won't even have time to think about how you're achieving those goals. So get out there, start posting if y'all wanna do it. You got nothing to lose, right? Who's, what's gonna happen if you post something that's crappy? Someone's gonna make fun of you on the internet? So what? Freaking post it. So anyways, guys, that wraps it up. We'll see you in the next episode of Teeth and Turbos. I'm super close to that 100K subscriber mark. It's been a life goal of mine. So if you haven't already, make sure you sub below, leave me a like, leave me a comment. We'll see you on the next episode.
Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've been wrenching on your car, need a 10 millimeter wrench, plowing a bag of flaming hot Cheetos and drinking a Dr. Pepper and realize, dang it, I really need to brush my teeth? Well, now's your chance. I'm talking Dr. Parker 10 millimeter tool brush, a toothbrush on one end, a 10 millimeter wrench on the other. This sucker, CNC billet aluminum, baby. Lifetime warranty. Get them now at CletusMcFarland.com.